Hi friends, in this video, I will discuss the Viber questions based on the Frank Hertz experiment, which proves the presence of discrete energy levels in atoms. The aim of this experiment is to demonstrate the concept of quantization of the energy level of an atom. And this is the experimental setup in which there is a tube which have a low pressure gas here it is argon and there are four electrodes in this tube it is a tetrode so one is cathode the grid one grid two and anode so there are four electrodes and when electrons are emitted from the cathode using the thermoionic emission then they are accelerated towards grid G1 and G1 is at positive potential at with respect to cathode so electron will move accelerate towards the anode and in between they will collide with the argon atoms and the collective plate is at lower potential as compared to the grid 2 and if electrons have sufficient kinetic energy then they will pass through grid and they will go to anode and they will create some current uh, on emitter and electrons which do not have enough energy they will be slowed down and come back and we will find a typical graph like this first with increasing the voltage the uh, current will increase and after uh, a time max after a maxima it will come down and again this kind of curve is obtained when the electrons strikes with argon here and if we see the explanation of this graph we will find the peaks or the maxima and when it comes down around 11 volt there is a difference of 11 volt for each peak and this is uh, the lowest energy required by the argon atom for the excitation or it is the excitation energy for the argon atoms and after each uh, 11 volt gap uh, the current drops sharply we can see uh, from these peaks and the drop is due to inelastic collision between the accelerated electron and the argon atoms and collective current drops at multiples of 11 electron volt means at 11 22 33 and like this and the experimental result suggests that the electrons give energy to the atoms in only discrete energy levels at fixed uh, gaps and we can also see the graph directly on the cathode ray oscilloscope or CRO screen. So this is the typical graph for the argon gas. Now we will discuss some Viber questions. So first question is what is Frank Hertz experiment? So it was the first experiment in 1914 for the existence of discrete energy states in atoms and it shows the quantum nature of atoms means electrons occupy only discrete and quantized energy states as theoretically explained by Bohr. So why argon gas is used in Frank Hertz experiment instead of mercury? So Frank and Hertz had used this experiment with mercury vapors but mercury is toxic or harmful therefore argon is preferred and heat is also heat is required to vaporize the mercury but in case of argon there is no need of any heat or any extra thermal arrangement and the frank hertz tube used in this lab is tetrode filled with argon gas but in other laboratories there may be some uh, neon gas or even mercury vapors also. What is a tetrode valve? A tetrode valve is 
having four active electrodes like cathode control grid g1 screen grid g2 and anode there are four active electrodes in cathode wall why bg1k is set at 1.5 volts it is used to accelerate the electrons emitted from cathode towards anode so cathode and between cathode and grid 1 there is positive potential to accelerate the electrons what is the use of setting bg2a at 7.5 volts so this grid act as a retarding potential for the electrons and if the electrons have more than 7.45 volts then they will pass and reach the anode and we will get current otherwise they will return and then reaccelerate towards anode what is retarding potential or stopping voltage in frank hertz experiment the retarding potential or stopping voltage it prevents the low energy electrons from reaching the collecting anode and contributing to the measured current on emitter and if we see this graph then this retarding potential gives us the distinct peaks for maxima and minima otherwise we will get some kind of this lower kind of curves so it gives us contrast so it enhances the contrast between minima and maxima uh, of current and it allows us to find the distinct pattern of the measured spectrum what is used to fill the glass tube and name its sub suitable replacement usually it was filled with mercury vapors because they don't react with free electrons but mercury is harmful therefore any inert gas can be used like neon and organ in case of neon we can see the visible radiation when atoms lose energy so we will see some orange color in that tube what kind of collision occurs between electrons and mercury atoms or inert gas atoms both elastic and inelastic collisions occurs during elastic collision electrons gain energy while during inelastic collision they give all their energy to inert gas atoms or mercury vapors what are elastic and inelastic collisions elastic collisions are those collisions where the total kinetic energy of the two bodies remains the same and the momentum and kinetic energy both are conserved in this case so electron strike with atom and after the collision this momentum and kinetic energy both are conserved but in case of the inelastic inelastic collision uh, there is a loss of the kinetic energy so in that case uh, the some energy will come out as uh, some radiation or light emission so in the in this case kinetic energy is not conserved but momentum is conserved what is bohr theory of atom so in 1913 niels bohr proposed the bohr model for atomic structure and the electrons move around the it was that electrons move around the nucleus in definite circular orbits and these orbits are also called the shells or energy levels like this nucleus is here and then electrons are uh, revolving in stationary orbits and each orbit is stationary and has definite energy and these circular orbits or shell with definite energy are, are called orbital shells and uh, these are labeled with quantum number n n equal to 1 2 3 these are the different energy levels and the lowest energy level is called the ground state this n equal to 1 is known as the ground state level and electrons do not radiate energy while revolving in these shells of fixed energy if electrons is revolving in a particular orbit then it does not radiate any energy uh, any radiation but energy is only radiated or absorbed only when electrons jump from one energy level to another energy level then we will have some kind of radiation 
and the uh, difference is delta E equal to E2 minus E1 that is H nu some energy what do you mean by discrete energy levels the discrete energy levels of an atom means the different energies by different electron paths and if we have the nucleus the first orbit second level third level e1 e2 e3 e4 like this and the energy level are discrete means they are only in integral multiple of uh, smaller units and they have value only 1 2 3 4 integer numbers suppose ground state is 1 first excited state e2 e3 e4 so they can stay only in steps they cannot uh, stay in between these levels so either they will be in e1 or e2 or e3 or n1 n2 n3 states they are they cannot stay in between so these are the discrete energy levels how we can get the wavelength of radiation during the transition of electrons the wavelength lambda of radiation produced by an electron jumping between an atoms energy levels like one electron is jumping from here to here then the difference delta e in energy equal to h nu and this h nu equal to hc by lambda and 1 by lambda will be delta e by hc and then we can find out 1 upon lambda equal to r 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square and where r is the Rydberg constant the value is 1.0973 into 10 to the power 7 per meter what is ionization energy the ionization energy is the minimum energy required to remove an electron from an atom or from ion, ion in the gas phase so if we have a neutral atom and if one electron is removed from here then it has some positive charge so if we have some like, like if we have argon so it will be argon plus plus one electron is removed so this is known as the ionization energy how do we prove that existence of discrete energy levels using this experiment so the graph obtained in this experiment is like this we have some maxima and minima and it verifies that atomic elect uh, electron energy states are quantized by observing maxima and minima in transmission of electrons through inert gas or mercury vapor as long as the collision between electrons and gas atoms is elastic the electron will gain energy so it is elastic collision and after certain peak the, they will there will be in elastic collision and they will lose energy and the variation in electron current is caused by inelastic electron scattering that excited the atomic electrons of gas argon or mercury and the graph proves that electrons exist at different energy levels what are the differences between a vacuum tube and a semiconductor device a vacuum tube is a glass tube that has its gas removed and it creates a vacuum and it contains electrodes for controlling the electron flow and were used in early computers as a switch or an amplifier and they were also used in radios television and telephone system up to year 1950 and they were named as diode, triode, tetrode, pentode, etc. And these are the images for diode, triode, and tetrode, these different kind of valves or vacuum tubes. And the vacuum tube was, they were discovered around 1907. Later, in 1947, the transistor was discovered. And in 1963, the integrated circuit or IC chips were discovered. And they were and they are now, nowadays the semiconductor chips are there they are um, used in all electronic devices nowadays and only few higher power devices like amplifier or high fi audio systems they use the vacuum tubes otherwise most of the equipments or electronic devices they use the semiconductor chips 
So what are the importance of the Frank Hertz experiment? The Frank Hertz experiment was the first electrical measurement to show the quantum nature of atoms which transformed our understanding of the physics and about the matter. And it confirms the prediction of the quantum theory that electrons occupy only discrete and quantized energy states. And this experiment supports the Bohr model of atom. And it used in neon light sign boards like these kind of boards for advertisements. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. And in previous video, we have discussed the energy band gap by Fourier method. And in next video, we will discuss the Newton's ring experiment. And if you have any queries, please write in the comment box. And uh, if you are new, then please subscribe this channel so that you can get the information about the new topics and new experiments. Thank you very much.